do know this is legit. WBC 130-pound uh, world title for Oshaki Foster, a first title defense. This is a guy that's an interesting story that Dan's going to get into here, including uh, being in prison at one point, but now it's a reclamation project. Come out of prison, won a world title. Tell me more about Rocky Hernandez from Mexico. We see a fairly even fight on the Bet US line. Foster, the champion, is only one and a half to one. Look at the props for the knockouts. 12 round fight, WBC belt on the line, over under 10 and a half. All right, give me more on Foster's story. What kind of chance does Hernandez have? Saturday night in Mexico. Let's do some handicapping, my friend. So this is an interesting matchup. Uh, first and foremost, interesting because the two fighters have completely different styles. Oshaki Foster is more known for being a skillful boxer, and R Rocky Hernandez is nothing but a straight brawler. And so when you put those two types of fighters in the ring together, it's always a matter of which guy can inflict their style on the other man. And so that that becomes the question. Is it going to be Oshaki? Not to say that the other guy can't box and maybe win a decision or that uh, that Foster could perhaps land a great punch and get the knockout. But Foster's background doesn't necessarily say that. And the same goes with Hernandez. Hernandez, uh, he has won. Hernandez, let's talk about Hernandez first. He's the Mexican fighter. He's the mandatory challenger. This fight was won uh, at a purse bid by Matchroom Boxing, which is why it's on their card. Oshaki Foster is a promotional free agent, actually, at this point. So they brought this fight to Mexico to be the main event of the card on the zone on Saturday night. And so uh, Hernandez, exciting fighter, when he was coming up, a lot of people thought he was going to go and do big things. He had been with Golden Boy Promotions. They matched him up with Roger Gutierrez. He was the favorite to win. Gutierrez was a pretty good fighter, you know, at one point was a world champion. Uh, and in shock of shocks, Roger Gutierrez knocked uh, Rocky Hernandez out in the first round. Mm. And that was a big, big surprise. Now, he has, to his credit, came back from that knockout loss. He has won six fights in a row by knockout, got himself in position to challenge for this WBC 130-pound title. So he is being, he's going to be at home for this fight in his home country. Uh, obviously, he has confidence from, from the point of view of having won six in a row all by knockout. Uh, the downside of that is that if you take a look at the guys he's knocked out in those six fights, it's not exactly been murderer's row. So I question the level of his competition. Taking a look at uh, Oshaki Foster, good boxer, came up if you watched Showbox on Showtime. He was a prospect that fought on that series. I think both of his losses actually were on that series, but it was the kind of uh, performances where he learned, you know, just because a guy loses doesn't mean you can't recover, get better, and, uh, and uh, fix your mistakes and that sort of thing. And Foster, uh, again, he went to uh, the United Arab Emirates and he won an elimination fight to get the mandatory shot at the WBC title. The title was uh, it became vacant. You had the featherweight champion of the WBC, Ray Vargas, move up in weight. Uh, and so they matched Oshaki Foster with Ray Vargas for this vacant title. That took place earlier this year. And Oshaki Foster boxed a brilliant fight that night and, and uh, handed Ray Vargas his first loss, sent him back to the featherweight division where he still had the title. And uh, that's where he'll campaign. And Oshaki won this belt. There was a... To the fact that he won that title from where he had come from is pretty amazing. Like I said, not yeah. only the two losses, and Oshaki's talked about this also. He, you know, he was a guy that was involved with not like super, you know, violent crimes or anything like that, but like, you know, uh, you know, stealing stuff, some petty crimes, this and that. Found himself in in and out of jail uh, in Orange, Texas, where he's from. And as he tells the story, he was doing four months in in jail, and I guess uh, they were able to watch a Terrence Crawford fight at some point. And he had been a good amateur, and I guess he makes the point that I watched that fight, and I made a decision that when I get out of this place, I'm going to dedicate myself to boxing. And that is what he did, inspired by the performance of Terrence Crawford. He worked his rear end off, and six years later, he won a world title. And is, uh, you know, I guess now on the straight and narrow, uh, living his best life, and he's going to Mexico, fearless, uh, to go and, and defend his world championship against the hometown, uh, the home country guy, in uh, Rocky Hernandez, it's, you know, it's inspirational and it doesn't happen in most other sports, but boxing allows you to get that kind of second chance with a, a rough start and a rough life. And, uh, you know, you climb up by your uh, pull yourself up and make something out of yourself. And that's exactly what Oshaki Foster has done. All right. Uh, so let's get into the picks. What do you like here for this one? Go ahead. I like science in this one. I think Oshaki Foster is the more talented boxer. I don't really give a lot of credence to the opponents that Rocky Hernandez has defeated, even though he's exciting and he's a good puncher based on those knockouts. Uh, to me, uh, as we say, uh, I will quote, as I've often done, the great philosopher Floyd Mayweather, skills pay the bills. And uh, <laughs> Shaki Foster's got the skills. And uh, I don't think that Rocky Hernandez can hang with him in the skill department. 
I think while Sha- Shaki Foster is not a big puncher, has only got about 11 knockouts and 20 wins. Uh, right. It's not like he can't keep you honest and hurt you a little bit. Uh, I don't think that Rocky Hernandez has the greatest defense, so I think the combination of the Oshaki Foster skill set and speed, plus the chance to land a few decent shots to, to again keep him honest, to me that all spells a a, uh, a pretty handy decision for Oshaki Foster. Therefore, I'm taking the over, which is uh, ten and a half. You and I are in agreement. I know you don't like that. This is twice the same show that we're in agreement. What do you think of Four Clover's point down here? He says, in looking at the fighters in the pre-fight buildup, the press conference, they've got the weigh-in a little later today, Foster looks super focused and in tremendous shape, while Hernandez doesn't look very focused and doesn't look to be in great shape. I I don't know how valid that is. We'll take you at your word, Four Clover. I haven't seen him to see if he looks sloppy, looks overweight. But what do you what do you make of one guy looking more focused before the fight? You've seen that a bunch. Does yeah, that I mean anything? I've never, I've never really put a lot of thought or stock into, like, the observation visually, does a guy look focused? I don't know what that means. Focused is not how you look. It's what's in your mind. So I can't speak to that. Now, sometimes if you if a guy's talking about all kinds of things besides the fighter, he's got lots of other things swirling around his life uh, outside the ring, you know, I've I've written about fighters right. where I knew they were like you know in a you know in a in a divorce proceedings the week before their fight you know or or doing doing other kinds of things that you well let's bring it to this hurt. if I can interject remember Teofimo Lopez you've talked sure. about this and we t- we handicapped on the show he was going through all kinds of personal problems illness a divorce and he fought spectacularly against Josh Taylor where you would think he might be a mess in the ring. And he hadn't looked good like in his previous tune-up fight. And there's your point. He looked fantastic. The most famous example of all time is Buster Douglas. Yes. The guy went into the Iron Mike Tyson fight. His mother had just passed away. The mother of his child was uh, battling an illness. Yes. He was about a billion to one. And he slayed the dragon. So sometimes whatever issues are swirling around you outside, you can tunnel vision for one night and have your best performance. So I don't put a lot of stock in focus, not focus. Now, in terms of okay. what kind of shape you're in, honestly, I have seen the photographs of of uh, of Rocky Hernandez pre-fight, but he's been just wearing the street clothes and posing for pictures. So I don't have any particular viewpoint or opinion on how kind of shape he's in. Um, I just know this, that Oshaki Foster is a very quality boxer with, uh, with good skills, good amateur background, very confident, coming off a very big win, uh, you know, I definitely think Ray Vargas is better than Rocky Hernandez, although they're different kinds of fighters. So, you know, my pick is uh, is Oshaki Foster by decision, and, and obviously that means the over. I think that uh, he gets the job done. And what I liked about him is you want to talk about focus. A lot of times when guys talk about other fights, that might lead you to believe that they're not thinking about their opponent, but they're looking ahead. But the way that Oshaki spoke, I didn't get that impression. He wants to do this fight against Hernandez, and then what he would like to do is to unify titles with Joe Cordina, who's uh, the IBF champion in this weight class, who's got a fight coming up uh, in uh, November, uh, also a Matchroom fighter. So it's even though uh, you know, Oshak, I don't think, is signed with Matchroom, it's not an, a fight that couldn't possibly be made. That'd be an interesting fight, too. So he's yeah, using like this one. fight as, let me win this fight. And my yep. motivation partially is because I think I can get a shot at the bigger fight after that. Like that. Lock it in here. Dan and I both on the decision. Again, I think Foster's been in with better competition as well. We also are going to take the over. We're laying 120 to get the decision. The over-under is 10 and a half rounds. We're both going to take the over as well. Again, for Rocky Hernandez, a lot of early knockouts in his recent fights. But as Dan just cautioned you, if that's against nobodies, if that's if that's against inferior competition, it can be very misleading. I think this is Foster's to win. And look at that. On the Bet US line, we're not getting great value on the over. They believe this is a distance fight. You and I will still take it. We'll hit that single like you talk about in baseball. Forget about swinging for the fences. We'll hit the single and take the over if we believe in the decision as well. And again, that is the Matchroom to Zone show in Cancun, Mexico. Will uh hernandez have some home country fans will it be some atmosphere for him we don't know we'll find out uh in that one